Hi everyone, today we will learn about average acceleration and how to solve for it. Okay, so our objectives for today, number one, is for you to be able to define acceleration. And number two is for you to calculate for acceleration and describe its relationship to velocity and time. And our main focus for today is acceleration, specifically average acceleration, and then how it relates to um, problem solving or calculation. Okay, let's go ahead and define acceleration first. So if an object changes speed while it is moving, that change happens at a rate we call acceleration, meaning when there is a change in speed or velocity, that's acceleration. So from there, we can say that acceleration is equal to change in velocity divided by time interval. So when there is a change in velocity or speed, there is acceleration. Notice that when we say change in velocity, it doesn't refer to just speeding up, but it also refers to slowing down. So when the car speeds up or when the car slows down, acceleration is present. In physics, any change in velocity is acceleration. So picture at the right here, we're taking a 0.1 seconds apart, but these balls are accelerating. Okay, so for example, when you travel from here to Gallup, you know that the car is accelerating because, of course, from here, you start from rest. This, the car is on stop, right? And then suddenly it moves. Let's say it moves to uh, 50 miles per hour. And when you reach Ganado, you slow down to 45 miles per hour. And then when you reach, um, let's say, for example, window rack, you speed up again to 65 miles per hour. So changing in velocity in a period of time, you know, as you travel, refers to acceleration. So when it speeds up, when it slows down, acceleration is present there. Um, we said that acceleration doesn't just refer to speeding up, but also to slowing down, because sometimes a decrease in velocity is called deceleration or negative acceleration, but both of them are still considered as acceleration. So meaning, let's say if your car is traveling at 90 miles per hour, and then suddenly it slows down to 60 miles per hour, we call that as negative acceleration or deceleration because it slows down, but it is still an acceleration. So in the warm up that we have earlier, in a car, there are three important controls which makes which makes it accelerate. So that's the main purpose of your gas pedal, the brakes, and the steering wheel. To accelerate, either to speed up, slow down, or to change direction. Stomping on the brakes, for example, results in a very strong change per second in speed or velocity. You feel this because your body tends to lean forward, and you, especially when you just stomp it right away, so your body will lean forward. That means to say that acceleration is changing. So aside from the fact that acceleration relies on velocity, acceleration also deals with direction. So remember that since velocity changes, when direction changes, even if the speed is constant, meaning acceleration also applies to changes in direction. Let's say, for example, if you turn a corner at a constant speed, your body tends to move outward towards the outside of the curve. Or let's say, for example, you're moving at a speed of 50 miles per hour, and then you suddenly turn to the right, and your speed is not changing. It's still 50 miles per hour. Even if the speed is not changing, acceleration is changing. Why? Because there is a change in directions. So it is important to see that acceleration is the rate at which any change in velocity happens, not just speed. Because velocity, again, refers to speed plus direction. So that's why we will most likely be using velocity because it has direction. Speed is just how fast something is with no direction, but velocity is how fast something is in regards to the direction. So most of the time in class, we will be talking about motion along a straight line. So we can also write the formula for acceleration as change in speed divided by time interval. So change in velocity or triangle V can also be written as final velocity or initial velocity. Same with velocity formula, right? We have x2 minus x1, or final distance minus initial distance divided by time. So it has something to do with that as well. I want you to familiarize the units, though. Um, for velocity, we always use the unit meter per second. 
We also use kilometer per hour. And we also use miles per hour. If you take a look at the unit, it's a combination of a lot. It's a combination of distance and time. Well, your time, of course, is seconds or hours. So this is the most common that we use as a unit um, for velocity and for time. And the unit for accelerations come from this. Uh, we don't cancel out anything. We just copy it because the unit for acceleration comes from speed and velocity with regards to time. So the unit that we will be using is meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Okay, why? Because here... You have meters per second per second. We cannot um, cancel the seconds because both of them are in the denominator. So there's an invisible exponent, 1. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. That's why we have meters per second squared. So take note of the units because we will be using that. And, of course, the formula, velocity divided by time. Okay, so we have an example here. It's a problem related to acceleration. So it says, if a car goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, take note of the word from, meaning from is like the starting point. So this is your starting velocity, this is your final velocity. So from zero to 100 kilometer per hour in 10 seconds, what is its acceleration? So of course, every time we do problem solving, we need to find out the given, the required, the formula, and the solution. So our given numbers include zero, 100 and 10 and we need to figure out acceleration so since acceleration is missing we're going to use triangle v divided by time again i want you to remember that triangle v is vf minus vi so vf minus vi divided by time is the other formula list down the given numbers in the equation so these are the given and you underlined it earlier so for you to know what it is your zero is your initial because it says from zero meaning it's the starting velocity Starting velocity is known as your initial velocity. And your 100 kilometers per hour is your final velocity, your VF. And then, of course, 10 seconds is your time. And then after you do that, for the solution, you just, sub you just substitute the known variables into the equation. VF minus VI divided by T, that's going to be 100 kilometers per hour, minus zero equals Minus zero equals 100 divided by 10 equals 10 kilometers per hour per second. So we don't cancel out units, we just copy them. So your final answer is 10 kilometers per hour per second. So that is the acceleration of the car that goes from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 10 seconds. So I hope it is clear. We'll have another example here. Another example tells you that we are riding on a bike and we change our velocity by five meters per second in one second. What is the acceleration? In this kind of problem, what is given to you is the average velocity already. You don't have the final velocity, you don't have the initial velocity, but you have the average velocity of five, and then one second is the time. Still, we use the formula A is equal to triangle V divided by time. Our given includes triangle V equals five meters per second and time one second. So we just have to substitute the known variables into the equation. Acceleration equals five because that's your triangle V, five meters per second divided by one second equals five meter per second per second or five meters per second squared. As you can see, our unit for seconds cannot be canceled out because both of them is in the denominator part. So we just add them, one plus one equals two. So you have five meters per second squared. Okay, now for another example, we will do it all together. So I want you to help me solve for it. And we're going to identify here the given. Then we will also take a look into the required. And then um, you will need to have, of course, the formula. And um, you need to have the solution. How did we solve for it? Okay, I'm going to turn on the pen. Um, can you please underline the given numbers? Okay, and then can someone write the given number? Okay, VI equals. Okay, very good. What's next? Okay. Okay, and what is your time? 
Okay, very good. What is required now? What's missing? Okay. And what formula are we going to use because we have VF and VI? Okay, good. VF minus VI divided by or over T. Okay, very good. So VF minus VI divided by time. So substitute the given numbers and then solve for it. So substitute the given numbers. Mm. Yes, that's true. 15. That's right. Continue. So A equals 15 meters per second minus... 25 meters per second divided by five seconds. Okay, so what is what is 15 minus 25? You already have the substitution. Okay, very good. It's negative 10 meters per second divided by or over five seconds. So what's our final answer? Negative 10 divided by 5. What is your final answer now? Okay, thank you so much, Mido and Kimura. So your final answer would be negative 2 meters per second per second or negative 2 meters per second squared. Okay, so that is your final answer. What does it mean when we say negative? Um, speeds up or slows down? negative that means to say it slows down okay or goes down um you know that it is slowing down because the starting velocity is faster 25 and then it goes down to 15. so you would know that the acceleration is really going down if your answer is negative like this one so negative two meaning slows down okay all right great job so let's just have this summary and then after that i'm going to give you the work that you will be doing for today so to summarize, average acceleration is the rate of change of velocity or the change in velocity per unit of time. The formula is A equals triangle V divided by T, which means acceleration. Take note of the relationship here. Acceleration is directly proportional to velocity, but inversely proportional to time. What does it mean? It means that the higher the velocity, the higher its acceleration will be in a shorter period of time. So change in velocity of written as formula will become velocity final minus velocity initial. And the formula can be rearranged if time or velocity is missing instead of acceleration. But we're going to do this on Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Bye.